Darrington's kind of the the new toy on this offense, and you probably have some some stuff you've drawn up for him that you ne- haven't necessarily had a chance to use before. Um, are you eager to get him in there and use that stuff, and have you had to keep some stuff in your pocket without him? Well, you know, every guy we have on our roster, I think, is a little unique with their skill set, kind of what you're alluding to. But with Darrington, we just got you know, see where you know where he is. When Braves tells me uh, he's ready to go, uh, we'll certainly have a role for him. But uh, you know, until we get going and he gets in there, um, I just have to see. But uh, both all the, with all our guys, try to try to enhance what they do well and see where they kind of fit into the, the uh, puzzle for the big picture for us. Thanks. Uh, Buck. Hey, Arthur. Uh, we were talking to Mike yesterday about uh, improved efficiency on offense. You obviously had a really good outing on Sunday against uh, Jacksonville, but I'm wondering what your evaluation is of your guys' efficiency as a unit so far. Well, I mean, we, we, we think we, we need to improve. We got to get much better. And I think that's the, that's a challenge week to week is, as this thing goes on is, uh, is as we focus, it's just improving. We, we can, we need to, to get better in, in a lot of areas. And certainly we want to get our run game going to what we feel like our standards are. And so it's a constant challenge, but the thing is, is if we don't cons- consistently try to improve, it, it's, it won't end well for us. Thank you, uh, Jim. And, and Arna, I think you just kind of touched on it there with Buck's question. I, I asked Shane, but what, what have you liked about what you've seen from your guys so far through two weeks? And in addition to the run game, what are some other areas you're, you're focusing on trying to get better? Well, everything. I mean, we're constantly, you know, as situations pop up, uh, we're, we're constantly evaluating that, uh, what we do well and, and – especially in critical situations and you're constantly evaluating it. If, you know, plan off what, what we've done, what they do. Uh, and so that's, it's, that's, that's kind of the chess match there. So we're constantly looking like that. If there's counter punches, the things we're doing and what fits us. Uh, Tron. Yeah, coach, how much does Tannehill's ability to, work through his progression so quickly, how much does that influence how evenly the ball is being distributed in these first couple of games? Uh, it's, a, it's a credit to, to him, and it's a really a credit to those guys out there playing. I mean, they're doing a good job, and everybody understands where they fit into it. Um, and we, we feel like we got multiple guys that can move the football for us, and Ryan's done a nice job, and there's a lot of trust that's developed. A lot of guys, I mean, he's gotten a lot of reps with, and I think that's starting to pay off as well. Is that something that you guys discuss, like working through the progressions quickly and, and just regardless of Jersey, throw it to that guy if he's open? Well, it, it just depends on on the play. I mean, you could certainly – there's multiple ways that you can read, if you you know, and, I, again, I don't want to get too detailed with scheme, but there's certain things that you're – that you're trying to get done, and if they take it away, you got to have an answer. Um, and what, what's certainly paying off is – is guys are, you know, he's got a comfort level with multiple guys and there's trust being built with multiple players on offense. And that's what's really showing up more than anything. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry. Uh, Arthur, in terms of Ryan, he kind of became the leader of the offense once he became the starter last year and guys kind of bought into him. How much is, have you seen that uh, relationship and that, ownership of everything continue to grow as, as throughout the off season and now the regular season. Yeah. I mean, the best thing about Ryan is he's just been himself, you know, when he took over last year, uh, it was obviously a very different situation when you're taking over for somebody like that mid season, you know, he didn't come out too strong and he was himself and it just kind of organically happened. And then I think a lot of times when you build confidence and success and everybody around it, then you can naturally take it over. And that's, a, that's the whole thing. Can we, can we evolve and keep, keep making improvements from week to week. And I think when you do that and you can have success, there's a strong buy-in factor. Does the offense then kind of take on his personality and where he wants it to go? I mean, sure. I, mean, I think everybody on the offense, I mean, you, you, as you have success, the quarterback's obviously a critical role on any team. And and uh, he's done a nice job so far. So, uh, John Glennon. 
Hey, Arthur, a um, lot of success for you guys, not only this year, but in the past and in late game and, and you know, two minute situations, whether it's half or end of game. What are some uh, of the biggest points that you emphasize, you know, to, to the offense in those situations? You know, I guess, aside from the obvious that the, the clock is winding down, what what are some priorities in those situations for you guys? Oh, a lot of things. And it's, it's, it's you know, Rabes does a great job of the way we set things up. And we put those guys in constant, as, stress, as stressful as you can in practice. And you just, you build those, that trust in, the, in those reps over and over. So, and you're constantly looking to sharpen it. Like, hey, this happens, let's let's do this. And you're, and you're constantly working through it and you can see it paying off. And it, that's the challenge. And so, all right, we've had it the last two weeks. I mean, teams are going to study the crap out of you and you got to keep going. And uh, our guys are very comfortable in those situations. Thanks. Uh, Jim? Arthur, how, how much better a place is Adam Humphreys in now at the start of this season? And is that kind of showing up from what you've seen from him on, you know, on film so far? Yeah, Adam's done a nice job. Uh, I think like everybody, he's tried to expand his role. And I think there's definitely goes back to some of the earlier questions. I mean, those are, that's a, I keep saying it, but there, there, there is a chemistry that gets built when you, you, you have guys that get multiple reps together and, and you've played in multiple games, and there's a certain feel that they have for each other, and I think that's what's starting to pay off as well. And I'm gonna ask Mike this as well, but you know, with you the know, new practice squad rules and with more veteran a veteran presence on there, do you approach those guys during the week differently than you maybe did in years past? I know Chester Rogers knew he's a guy who's who's been in the league, played in some games. Are they as involved as they've ever been? Do you incorporate them more in what you do? Or, or, or how does that work with kind of changes there as far as veteran availability? Well, I, it's, you know, whether it's a veteran or a young guy, we've had multiple guys come through the practice squad that, you know, we, as, as best as they can catch up. And if they're called upon, that you know, we get them ready to play. And that's really this my focus is whoever's out there we're working with. Like, I don't worry about the injuries. It's not my job or, or the roster. You just – I listen to what Braves tells me, you know, who's up and who's down. And my job is to try to go make it work. And we try to develop as a staff. And that's kind of our whole mindset. So if somebody's out there, we, you know, we continue to work. And if, because their number is going to get called on at some point, that's evident. Um, so it's just kind of a credit from the top down philosophy. Uh, John? Hey, sorry, Arthur. I forgot my follow here. Um, Mike Vrabel mentioned earlier in the week um, he'd like to see more efficiency in the running game and, and just wanted to get your thoughts on, on you know, maybe if you could kind of expand on that and, and what does that mean to you, uh, efficiency in the running game as it goes to, you know, whether it's running, blocking, whatever? Well, it's everything. Uh, you know, we can, I, certainly I can do a better job coaching, we can do a better job executing. And, you know, it's, it's the things that build up in the run game and that's the thing. There's no shortcuts and that's that's what you – it takes work to get to get this stuff going. And what I mean by that is just because you had something that worked for you in the past, doesn't necessarily you're just going to show up before it happened again. So we got to put put the work in. We got to constantly look to improve everything fundamentally, uh, assignment. And so you so you're not running, you know, zero, one yard, you know, two, one, zero, three. You know, we need to we need to start hitting being more efficient in that. And then I think you know the success will will come off of that.